This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Sayerite has posted many videos showing how to make a variety of cushions. In this tutorial video, we will show you how to make a bow cushion for the forward berth of a powerboat. This is a triangular shaped cushion which includes wedges on the sides and front of the cushion. This cushion project is part of Sayerite's 2016 project boat on a Regal Ambassador. You'll find varying shaped cushions in a forward berth area as seen here. The techniques in making them are all basically the same. Cindy will lay Duraskrim pattern material down to make a pattern for the new cushions. The old cushions have been removed and Duraskrim pattern material laid down. I'm going to use a ruler up against this um, angle so I get a good fit around this edge and make sure that everything's as flattened out as possible. The edge she is scribing against is where the horizontal base transitions to the curved hull or wall. Once that's done, we'll cut along that line all around the outer edge of our Duraskrim pattern material. Okay, we've cut the pattern on the lines that I uh, drew to begin with and it looks like it fits really well. Since the Duraskrim pattern material fits well, we can place marks where other cushions will stop or start. These separate cushions make it possible to remove cushions easily, for instance to gain access to storage compartments underneath them. For our area, we will separate this pattern into four separate cushions as seen in this rough drawing. Here the pattern material is not laying flat due to this obstacle. A slit will allow the pattern material to lay flat. We will not cut out the keystone cushion or the port or starboard side cushions or the bow cushion. We're just going to make marks for those. Always label your pattern material. This is the keystone and pout stands for port side out and sout stands for starboard out. Now to make the separation in this cushion and these two cushions, I'm going to use the top of this board to draw my line across here with the yard stick. This line separates the port and starboard cushions from the bow cushion at the front here. Now she labels the bow cushion with sout and pout. And okay, now I want to draw the line here to separate these two cushions. So I'm going to find the center of this area. I have my cushions divided for this area. We're going to leave the pattern material in place. We now need to determine the wedge or the curve along the sides of the cushion to match the hull or sides of the boat. So deter to determine the angle for cutting the foam, we're going to use a um, four inch box and I'm going to put it right along my cut edge and draw a line out here and then take the yardstick and measure into this edge and on this in this area it's five inches so I'm going to write down five inches right there and then move over about a foot and do it again I'm just going to do that all the way around and that'll um, determine the wedge for our foam piece the angles and right here it's five and a half it's going to change all the way around the box or object that you use needs to be the same thickness as the foam that you'll be using these measurements that Cindy is marking on the Duraskrim pattern material will be used to determine the wedge or the angle of the edge when it comes time to cut the foam and make the cushions plate. These are general guidelines for making cushions with a zipper on the bottom plate. They are not solid rules, but rather are preferred recommended practices that typically result in what we believe are the best looking finished cushions. Feel free to pause the video here to study the list of 11 steps. It is what we will be using to make the cushion in this video step by step. Sayerite recommends two types of foam for boat cabins, dry fast foam or high density polyurethane foam. Both foams have advantages and a few disadvantages. For more information about foam, click the link at the top right corner or contact us via email or phone. We're glad to help you pick the right foam for your application. The pattern we made for the bow cushion has been placed on the foam. Here we are using 4 inch dry fast foam. This will be the top surface of our foam and we need to add the extra size for the wedge, angled halls or walls of the boat. We mark those measurements on the Duraskrim pattern material, so Cindy is marking the foam the appropriate distance from the pattern's edge. 
However, she is also adding a quarter inch to the foam size following our 1% more to both dimensions guideline, or never less than a half inch. Be sure to always label your foam. This is the top side, sout side, and the port side. Now that the top side of the foam is marked, it's time to cut the foam to size. Sarah carries a few different professional foam cutters to pick from. However, foam for cushions can also be cut using an electric kitchen knife. Okay, you're asking yourself, aren't they forgetting the angled side cuts? No, the first cut must be made to the larger side of the foam, the top side. Then the next cuts will be made to make the wedges to the sides. Now to get the wedges in this piece, we need to turn it over and uh, turn our pattern over. Pattern is wrong side and up. Put it back in place with the quarter inch down here and the correct measurements on the sides. And then we'll add a quarter inch to our pattern and draw around it again. This is the bottom side of our foam, which will be smaller than the top side due to the wedges. The quarter inch is the 1% more to both dimensions guideline, meaning we're adding a quarter inch to both sides of the cushion, equaling a half inch. Never go less than a half inch. As mentioned earlier, Sarah carries a few different professional foam cutters. The next foam cutter we'll use is the AccuCutter 350. A close-up of the blades shows it has two, one that moves and one that is stationary. This two-blade combination is typically the best type of professional foam cutter. The Easy e shown earlier, has only one moving blade, which still works well, but requires the foam to be held firmly in place to keep it from vibrating up and down due to the single blade action. The foam's right side is facing down on the table. Notice that its edge is up against the edge of the table, which is used to help guide our blade along the edge of the foam there. Then the top portion of the blade is being held over our line, so we are cutting the desired wedge following our pattern line. As it is being cut, the foam is being moved so that the bottom edge of the foam is up against the table's edge as the blade continues to cut. This too can be done with an electric kitchen knife. Do this on a table, which is sacrificial, as it may accidentally scratch the edge of the table. As always, be careful that you do not touch the moving blade or even the stationary blade, as injury may occur. Now that the foam is cut to size and our wedges are cut in, we need to concentrate on cutting the boxing. But this boxing is slightly different due to the wedges. Let's show you how to do that next. Typically, boxing is rectangular and only the width of the foam needs to be measured and the quarter inch to three quarter inch added to the width following our guidelines. However, for irregular sides, like the wedges on this bow cushion, these need to be patterned to match the sides of the foam. Then the quarter inch to three quarter inch added to the width after patterning. Here we are using Duraskrim pattern material and a Sharpie marker to accomplish that task. Should the length of the boxing include an extra amount for seam allowance? No. The seam allowance used for joining each boxing strip together end to end should equal the seam allowance that is concurrently used up when sewing the boxing to the plates in a later step. When patterning each side, be sure to label so you do not get confused. Right side, top, port side, uh, outside surface, anything that helps to keep the confusion to a minimal will be beneficial. The trailing edge of this bow cushion is almost rectangular, except for the ends. The ends have an angle to them, so we could just measure the top side and the bottom side and make a rectangular piece, but it's just as easy to pattern. For our seam allowance, we'll be adding a half inch to the width. Here's Cindy to explain. Okay, we want to add a little bit of seam allowance to all of these pieces, and um, technically we should add a quarter of an inch to each side of this top and bottom. To add the seam allowance the clear acrylic ruler is used. She'll follow the line that she struck on the fabric. Here it's straight. Then the patterns are cut out with a half inch added, a quarter inch on each side. These are the boxing uh, pieces that we cut for uh, the cushion that we're working on. 
and um, these are never going to show. They'll be up against the side of the boat, so I'm not going to try to match these to anything. I'm just going to use my uh, fabric off to the sides of the pieces that I already cut. And these I'm going to cut with scissors. Um, you can use scissors or the hot knife. Either one will work. Um, the hot knife keeps it from raveling, uh, is kind of the advantage to the hot knife but scissors work just as well. Here's an edge cut with scissors. As you can see, if there's any pulling on the edge, it unravels easily. And here's an edge cut with a Sailrite Edge Hot Knife. It does not ravel. However, as you can see, cutting with scissors is pretty easy, especially if you pin the pattern material down to your fabric. Our foam is cut, and now our boxing is cut. Next up, the top plate. We're ready to make an, a top pattern for the top plate for the cushion um, up at the bow. So I'm going to do the same procedure as I did with the other and lay the dur scrim on the table with the top part of the cushion down. And then I'll have a complete pattern of this piece also. When cutting the plates, we add a quarter inch all around. However, the foam has already been cut quarter inch bigger all around for us. So we'll just trace right beside it. We're ready to cut the pattern pieces out for the V-Birth cushions of this Geobella fabric and it's got a really large graphic pattern on it. So we want to make sure that the pattern is centered. So I've marked the center of this um, piece and I want to center that on the center of this pattern. So I want this large uh, figure to be up here at the front and I would like to be whole if I can. And to make sure that this line stays straight across the bottom of the cushion, I'm using my ruler to line up this pattern and this pattern at the top of the pattern. And then I can bump my Duraskrim pattern right up against the edge of my ruler. And this line should be straight all the way across. I still have this figure at the very top. And I can cut out this piece and then I'll use this piece to match the pattern for the next two pieces. The two cushions below this are the port and starboard cushion. They've been done already. If you'd like to see how we did that, click the link up at the top I'm right. I'm gonna put a few pins in this to hold it in place so I can go around it with the soapstone pencil and then cut it with the hot knife. Since we've decided to use a hot knife to cut this top plate, we'll mark on the Giabella fabric. Here we're using a yellow grease pencil. Then we're going to remove the pattern and place a ruler underneath to prevent damage to the tabletop as we use the hot knife and cut on top of that ruler and over the lines we struck down on the fabric. The Sailrite Edge hot knife heats up in a few seconds and cools down in about a minute just by depressing the trigger. Visit Sailrite.com and search for Fabric Calculator to find a very helpful calculator that helps determine how much fabric is required for your project. However, for a very detailed calculator which even helps to calculate the exacting size of your cut panels and much, much more, go to the App Store and purchase the Box Cushion Fabrication Pro app. Okay, for some reason we lost the raw video file showing cutting the bottom plate for this bow cushion. So we will use cutting out the bottom plate for the port cushion instead. The process is exactly the same. This bottom plate will be cut out of the cushion underlining fabric um, and I want to lay my piece with the top down. So I have this one, this piece turned upside down and I'm going to add a quarter of an inch all the way around for seam allowance and uh, cut this with the scissors. We're using cushion underlining fabric for the bottom plate since a zipper will be installed there. They're not flippable, so no reason to use a decorative fabric for the bottom plate. Installing piping is an optional step. We're gonna show you how it's done. We're ready to cut the bias cording for our cushion. We're gonna put bias cording around the top plate of the cushion and to find the bias line in the fabric I'm going to line my ruler up on the selvage of the fabric and fold the selvage up to the ruler and this will be my bias line. This is how you make your own piping. Piping is optional. Piping can add a touch of class to a cushion, but it's a preference. And then I can use the rotary cutter and the mat. Cushions can be made without piping and they look great too. However, using piping does add to the overall strength of a seam. 
and I need my cording to be an inch and a half wide to get a half an inch seam. Um, that will vary depending on the thickness of your fabric. We mentioned earlier that we were going to use a half inch seam allowance to sew this cushion together. So we want the flange or tail of the piping to be a half inch when it is sewn together. Cindy has determined that with the piping choice and the fabric selection, she needs to cut this bias piping to one and a half inch so that the tail will equal one half inch. It works better to cut this on the bias because it has a little bit of give and it goes around the corners better. Um, it doesn't have to be cut on the bias, but it does go around your cushion a little bit nicer if it is. And I'm folding this up just so it still fits on the mat and I can cut it all in one piece without moving anything around. She'll cut several strips, hopefully enough to go around the entire perimeter of our cushion. Then later on we'll sew them together. To sew the multiple strips together, first the outside surfaces should both be facing up. Then Cindy will explain exactly what she'll do to join these two strips together and the others. When I sew these pieces together, I also need a bias cut here where the two pieces go together. So I can also use the ruler to get that cut and put my 45 degree line here and cut the ends off of these. And then I'm going to flip the top one and put them right sides together and leave a little ear on each side. And where I'm going to stitch is right at this from angle to angle, right across there. When joining sections of piping together, typically we don't worry about what the pattern looks like. And I'll do that with all of them before I go to the machine. We'll be using the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine, the Sayrite Ultra Feed Sewing Machine. I'm going to make the stitch a little smaller on this just because this is such a short seam. Um, it has a tendency to pull out and I'm not going to back stitch at each end. So I'm going to go ahead and make my stitch kind of small for these uh, short seams. To sew this Giabella fabric, we're using a V69 polyester thread. This is a Derby Navy. Sayrite sells many colors of polyester thread. Check them out at sayrite.com. We're also using a size number 18 needle. A size number 16 needle will work just as well with V69 thread. This Giabella fabric available from Sayrite sews easily with a home sewing machine. Other fabrics are also available that are great for V-birth cushions. Now to make the cording, lay your piping in the center of your fabric piece and just roll it over. And the foot has a channel in it that will carry the piping through as it stitches. So I'm just going to roll my fabric over and try to keep these two edges as even as possible because this will be my half inch seam. And I can use a longer stitch length for this. I'm going to hold the piping in the center of my fabric and just guide it as it goes. Fold my fabric over and try to keep these two edges even because um, this will create my half inch seam and the foot has a channel cut in it that's going to guide the piping through it. So if I hold it back here and just keep everything in place, the foot's going to pull it through for me. The Sayrite Ultrafeed sewing machines have a cording tunnel built into the standard foot. If you use another type or brand of sewing machine, you may need to install a cording foot. And then when I come to a seam, I want to fold that open um, so that it doesn't have so much bulk. And the reason that I want to cut these seams on the bias is because when it folds over, then it doesn't fold over on top of itself and it's not quite as thick in those areas. We picked Sayrite's medium 532nd inch welting cord. It's a polypropylene material with a uniform thickness which is very soft and takes bends very well. If it gets wet, it will not soak up water. If you're using piping, it's time to sew it to the top plate. And this cushion also, I want to start and stop the piping where it'll be the least noticeable. So I think I'll put it up here in the corner where it won't get any wear and tear and it'll be, it won't be right in the center here at the top. It'll be off to the side. 
And when I start again, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra, a couple, two or three inches before I start stitching so I can stop and start my cording. When sewing the piping, it is best to try to match the thread color as closely as possible to the fabric. So if the thread shows up when the cushion cover is turned right side out, it is not so obvious. Add any corners, make a few relief notches in the flange of the piping. This will allow it to take the turn more smoothly. Bury the needle, lift the foot, rotate the fabric assembly, lower the foot, and continue to sew to make sharp turns. Cindy runs out of bobbin here. You can see that by the trailing single thread behind the presser foot. She finds that out after she makes this turn. Whoops. We will not show refilling the bobbin, but it's an easy task. Now we're back to sewing again. And when you get back to where you started, you're going to leave about two or three inches longer than where you started and open up the stitching. Cut the cording off even with the spot where you started. And fold this extra length back on an angle or on the bias. Tuck the starting piece in and wrap the other piece around it and finish stitching. Our piping is now sewn to the top plate and it looks great. Up next, we'll join the boxing together. Okay, our plates and our boxing are cut to size and if we wanted piping, it too is sewn to our top plate. Next up, we will sew the boxing together end to end. I have all these pinned from when I cut them so I didn't get them confused. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pin these corner seams and stitch them you'll have a little bit of an ear at each end and that's okay. Because our boxing is irregular in shape, the odd shapes can make it more difficult to know where it's supposed to sit on top of the plate. Due to that fact, Cindy laid it along the top plate sides in the appropriate spot to be assured it was in the correct location. Then she pins the ends together so outside surfaces face each other. This process removes any possible mismatches of the boxing ends or wrong sides of the boxing when it is taken to the sewing machine to be sewn. As you can see by this example, everything looks like it fits together perfectly. So we know we have it right. Now I can take this to the machine and stitch these seams. Our seam allowance is a half inch. We'll just sew a half inch from the ends of the boxing pieces, reversing at the beginning of our stitching to lock the stitch in place and at the end of our stitching. The dog ears you see are normal. Here at the extreme bow end of our cushion, this piece looks a little strange, but that's just because it was patterned that way. Here, Cindy will explain. The way that we patterned this cushion, this looks a little odd right here. But I'll show you what happens when we open this up. Ta da! <laughs> it actually makes this corner even. Uh, next step on this one is to put the boxing strips on. So I'm going to apply the seam stick again close to the edge on top of the cording. At the beginning of this chapter, we didn't have the piping sewn onto the plate. Here we do. That's because we chose to use piping. Why are we using the quarter inch seam stick for canvas for this step? Well, with most rectangular cushions, this double-sided tape is not required, even though it is very helpful for amateur seamsters. But for irregular shaped cushions or cushions with stripes when you want them to match up to the boxing, it is a very helpful aid, even for a professional. Why? Because we can be assured that the boxing matches the plates along all sides before we start to sew. If it does not, we can make adjustments by reapplying. So Sayerite highly recommends the quarter inch seam stick for canvas for irregular cushions. Now I can peel the seam stick off and press all of these edges even with the edge of my top plate and take it to the machine and stitch it. And I want my corners. This corner won't land right on the corner because of the way we patterned it, and that's okay. This corner will land on the corner. So I'm going to work 
on my corners first and then press the rest of it down in the middle. We didn't discuss it earlier, but you'll notice that the seam stick is very close to the raw edge of the fabric. We do not want it close to the piping because we do not want the seam stick to show up. When we sew the boxing to the plates and the cushion is turned right side out, that's another good reason for using a quarter inch wide seam stick for canvas and not the three eighths inch or the half inch seam stick because the uh, width of it is small enough to fit on the flange of the piping. If everything was patterned correctly, now that the corners are basted down, hopefully when the center length is basted, it will lay nice and flat without bubbles or extra or too little fabric. If not, try repositioning the corners slightly and rebaste. Ours will come out perfect. We'll do this for every single side. We're gonna skip ahead here because ours is cut perfectly and we have no issues. If we had an issue, we would show you how we would try to resolve that issues before taking it to the sewing machine, but this cushion is perfect. Now I'm ready to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around the perimeter. The Sailrite Alterfeed LS1 is perfect for upholstery applications like this. It has a cording tunnel built into the standard foot, which works great. Simply sew around the perimeter, keeping the piping, if you have any, under the foot's tunnel. If you do not have piping, then sew a half inch from the edge of the assembly. When corners are reached, the needle is buried where the turn needs to be made, the foot lifted, then the foot lowered, and then she continues to sew. Install a zipper onto the bottom plate if the cushion is not flippable. It is easier than installing a zipper in the boxing. Cindy will show us how. We need to apply the zipper to the bottom plate of this cushion and we want to apply it to the wrong side of the cushion in the widest area that we can so that we have plenty of room to stuff the cushion core in. So I'm gonna put it right about there and I'm also gonna use um, seam stick with this and put a row of seam stick down each side close to the outer edge of the zipper tape. Again, using the quarter inch seam stick for canvas, the quarter inch size or width of the seam stick will keep the glue away from the teeth. That's why she puts it as close to the edge as possible. Peel off the transfer paper and that reveals the glue and then baste it along that edge of the bottom plate. This is again on the wrong side of the plate. I'm going to start stitching about an inch from the edge. If you leave a little bit free here at the end it's easier to put the slide on and I'm going to use the, this edge of my presser foot right up against the zipper teeth. Notice that a WS is scribed on the cushion underlining material meaning wrong side. Do some reversing at the beginning and also at the end. That presser foot has been run up against the teeth of the zipper. It is always a good idea to sew the zipper on the same side of the presser foot as the first side of the zipper flange was sewn. That way, if the presser feet are a different width on the left or right side, your stitch will be exactly the same distance from the teeth. Then push the slider in place as Cindy is doing here. Once it's in that position, spread the flange of the zipper apart and push the slider on until it slides into position. A common mistake is to forget to put the slider on, so don't forget this step. I'm going to make a couple of little zipper stops from uh, some of my scrap fabric and fold it in half and lay it on the end of the zipper and stitch over it two or three times. If you're sewing this with a home sewing machine, you may want to walk the sewing machine over the zipper's teeth instead of using the foot control. You can walk it by rotating the balance wheel around by hand. That way, if you get needle deflection, it doesn't break a needle. Now I can cut this fabric open so I can use my zipper. In a situation like this where the cushion is not flippable, we can't use the bottom side because of its shape, Installing a zipper like this is a production shortcut instead of installing it in the boxing, which is typically done for a cushion that may be flippable. 
In most situations, the occupant sitting on the foam cannot feel the zipper through the thickness of the foam. One more task, sewing the bottom plate to the assembly. Now I'm going to apply the bottom plate to the boxing and I'm going to use the seam stick on this also and put, place it along the edge. I'm going to need to put some clips in these corners um, for it to go around this real sharp corner here while I'm working on it. Again, we strongly recommend, unless you're a professional, to use seam stick for canvas a quarter inch to pre-base the bottom plate in place for a cushion which has an irregular shape. So, if you have issues with corners not matching up, you can unbaste a section and reapply prior to sewing. At the corners, Cindy will make a few relief notches, not deeper than the seam allowance. For us, that's a half inch. Typically, the corner of the bottom plate is a half inch over the seam that joined the two boxing strips together. She'll join up that corner and then move to the next corner, cut some relief notches and match it up there. Then she will try to baste it consistently down the length of that side. And if changes need to be made, she can make them because she's using the seam stick for canvas a quarter inch. This one looks like it's going to be great. Perfect. The rest of it goes good. good. Are you curious about the beeping you hear in the background? Those are pickers who pull items from Sayerite stock for your orders. Those are the scan guns making the beeping noises. This last side looks perfect too. If it were not, we could unbaste it and manipulate it around a little bit. Okay, we have this all um, seam sticked all the way around. I'm going to take it to the machine and stitch it all the way around the perimeter. We can start sewing anywhere, keeping that stitch, a straight stitch, about a half inch away from the raw edges of the fabric. Watch what she does here at the corner. She'll bury the needle right at the corner, lift the presser foot, roll the assembly around, lower the presser foot, and then continue to sew down the next side, a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. There should be no reason to show any more. Let's move on to inserting our foam. That's next. To turn the cushion right side out, unzip the zipper, and grab the insides and invert it. You will have to push the corners out by inserting your hand inside the cushion cover. Once all corners are pushed out, it's time to insert the foam. We're gonna show this in triple time here. Inserting foam is a laborious task. Usually two people can help assist in this process and make it go a little bit quicker. Notice that Cindy is having to pull the fabric into position. So in other words, she's stuffing the foam into each one of those wedges and corners. That is necessary on almost any cushion application, whether it be an irregular cushion or a rectangular cushion. Once you're happy with the way the cover is sitting, zip it up and you are done. That's why we got this perfect. Okay. You will find all kinds of great upholstery fabrics at Sayerite for cushions like this. A variety of foams are also available, including dry fast or high density polyurethane. If you have questions about the types of foam or fabric to use for your application, give us a call. This type of project can typically be sewn with any heavy duty home sewing machine, but as always, if you want the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine, check out the Sayerite Ultra Feeds.
It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.